Esther, there has to be a compromise, doesn't there? Because the problem is this war could drag on for weeks or even months because Russia doesn't have the forces to, to take the country. Putin miscalculated, but he does have the potential to continue airstrikes which is needlessly killing thousands of Ukrainian citizens. I know, and I think <clears throat> one of, I suppose, an uncomfortable situation for Putin would have to be, you know, d moving forces that have been dedicated on the Kazakh border to Ukrainian territory, again, which is not an ideal solution. I think we all knew that this was probably going to be the reality, that, you know, Ukraine would have to concede territory that realistically the powers that be didn't think they were going to keep anyway. I think th the bigger issue here is, and I think you, you um, hit the nail on the head when you discussed, you know, China can't afford this as well. I mean, obviously, at the beginning, we all thought this would... I think Putin thought this would be a lot shorter than it was. But it, where China is concerned, because while China has vocally said, oh, you know, you should have peace talks and all of that, China is still very much Russia's ally in this. And and when you know, Rus Russian businesses were kicked off the SWIFT system, they just hopped onto the Chinese one. So China has played a role in kind of mitigating a bit of the, the effects of the sanctions on the Russian economy. But the reality is this affects us all. This is a, fe this is a global crisis now, and we're all feeling it um, one way or another. So it d definitely this is the way to end, because we, we just can't keep going with this. It's Carol possible. Malone, do, do you think a compromise is inevitable? <laughs> I mean, of course, a compromise is what we want, but I don't believe anything Putin says. You no, know, he has a habit of pretending he wants to talk peace, and then he uses the, the peace of the talks to, to have a lull, to regroup, to reform his, his forces, and then he attacks again. But, you know, I, I'm not entirely sure what ground Ukraine can give. What are they going to do? Give up more land? You know, Russia took Crimea in 2014 illegally. The Russia will no doubt want them to give, to let these two independent states stay independent. And then what are they going to uh, later on? They're going to demand more. I just, I just think that. And one of the things I'm sure will be that they don't want Ukraine to join NATO. Well, it's, it's part of Ukraine's constitution that they they want to join NATO. And, and the bottom line is, if they had been in NATO, this invasion would never have happened. So they're going to press for that even more. They're not going to give the prospect of joining NATO up. But. I just, I just don't believe what Putin says anymore. You know, he's a liar, he's a bully, he cheats, he's, he's not a fair fighter in a war, if there can be such a thing. And I just think, you know, this is a guy who attacked a sovereign nation. You know, the UN Charter says you can't do that, and he did. So why should we believe a single thing he says about... Well, no, he, he's a war criminal, and I don't believe a single thing he says. But, Benjamin, the, the issue I have is that folk who are calling for a no-fly zone are not being realistic about the need to avoid nuclear warfare at all costs. Indeed, I, I heard a, an expert in DC that said the US has wargamed every possible outcome from behaving like that, and almost all of them end in World War yeah, Three. Yeah, I saw that. And so there's basically no dispute about what happens. I mean, look, Ukraine asked for a no-fly zone. Well, what did we do? We banned McDonald's in Russia, so now they've got a no-fry <laughs> zone, uh, which really, wasn't, really isn't going to solve it. Now, look, I, I think Carol hit the nail on the head there, actually, because, you know, you can't trust this man. And I think what he will use in a negotiation is an attack on Chernobyl, is nukes, is chemical warfare like they enacted in Syria. Those are the things, those are the cards that he has left on the table that he's going to play with. And the reason but, that I... So what do you say, though? No capitulation to Putin whatsoever. <clears throat> well, when it comes to things like NATO, you know, the, the argument for, for decades yeah. was that if Ukraine joined NATO, it would spark a war. Well, they didn't join NATO and it did spark a war. He doesn't want, as I think you pointed out, he doesn't want them to join NATO because uh, then that would put them, <laughs> Russia, in a weaker position. I think and may I just add one thing, which is, okay. quickly, which is that... Yeah. If, if, we, if you give in to Russia now, well, then they know a weakness and he's just going to exploit that six and, months and, down the line. And if Ukraine gives up land and gives up these two, these two states that have declared independence, well, you know, imagine the, the knock-on effect that's going to have around the world. What other separatist movements are going to see that, see Putin get away with it and push for it themselves? You know, in Catalonia, it's, it, w this will have a knock-on effect. They can't give up land that is theirs and they won't. I, I, I understand that, but is, is, isn't, isn't the point, Esther, Putin actually hasn't got away with this. Regardless of any ceasefire here, there is a fundamental change now in the Western world's relationship with Russia. We're not just going to forget this in a hurry. Of course, 
And I've been saying it for years, you know, the energy strategy was a complete debacle. Well, we're not going to be well, reliant now on the West on Russian that. energy. This has woken us up to the need for energy independence. And I think any... And, I mean, who was that Scottish MP that was saying, you know, we should denuclearize the UK? That, that argument has been put to bed. Exactly. But I think the bigger issue here is China's looking at this because when, when this conflict first started, one of the bigger fears was, oh, China's next with Taiwan. I think China's learned a lesson from this. But it's also important to, to reiterate that if we do capitulate to Russia's demands, there is a huge likelihood that China will take note of that and say, yeah. OK, well, if we invade Taiwan, they might eventually just capitulate. I mean, obviously, Taiwan's you know, security measures are vastly superior to Ukraine. We must admit that. But that is a very real possibility. Exactly. But, but there are various compromised positions here. And look, you know my views on Putin and this war. I don't want to bow down to Putin. But... Unfortunately, the guy is going to declare victory in some way, Carol. What, what, but, but we what know he has succeeded. What, what can Ukraine concede? They, there they were, an independent country doing nothing, saying nothing, and Russia invaded. What are they, what are they going to concede? They're going to have to give up land that is there. That's what this has been. It's a land grab back Well, here. now this falls, onto the bit, West. this falls onto the West. This is something, this is something we should have done in 2014. When, uh, completely. Russia, in Crimea, first, and, completely. Crimea, and that is there should be a peacekeeping force. There should be a hard line from now on that if Russia but chooses to step back, there is going to be consequences. But let's not say that. We say that, but we, we spend... No, but there needs to be action Years and it. years of spent there appeasing this guy. But let's you, can, you can bet that after this, Ukraine and other US allies will be arming up like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, but they already, there, let's there, there's look, no point. They, Russia already has... Crimea. We did capitulate in 2014. Of course, there, no there, there, there could be certain fudges like Donetsk, Luhansk, is there a referendum, for example, about what whether the they stay independent or not? I mean, look, all I'm saying is that we need to avoid a very lengthy war. Mm. Ukraine will be blown to smithereens mm. if it goes on like this for weeks and weeks. So I embrace the rhetoric coming from the peace talks. I think Zelensky, who's proven to be a very effective leader, is right to say we have our bottom lines, but we do want to negotiate and we want the West to negotiate. I think it's a sensible strategy. And Let's just be clear about who's on the back foot, though, because US intelligence mm -hmm. said that Putin expected to take Ukraine in 15 days. Well, Monday, today, is day 19, and he's nowhere near that. And so, Benjamin, so, what do we push Putin towards then? Well, the truth is... Deploying nuclear activity. The, the only reason he's entertaining peace talks is because his position is not what he expected and to because the, And he's going to be in a weaker and weaker position as more of his troops and his rubbish equipment and his useless tanks of course, are destroyed. Of course, but, but he has nuclear weapons. He has a huge array of bombs that he can unleash on Ukraine if he wants. So give him what he will claim to the Russian people to be a victory. And they will know full well very soon that it's not when they can't, go think, to I tell you they can't get money can't out on the bank and they can't buy furniture. You've kind of hit the nail on the head there. He is in a corner now, and he will have to save face for his own people. So there has to be... It has to look like Ukraine have given in. But literally... But, but I don't think they'll actually do that. I think what's happening now, though, and what might happen sooner than we think, is, is, is Russia will economically implode. Exactly. It's happening already. Exactly. And, and that's the best pressure. We're going to bring you some yeah. brilliant footage later in the show, actually, of one of the main Russian news bulletins tonight uh, being taken over mm. by, by a protester. So there is resistance building in Russia, and it will take time. And the whole thing with the financial yeah, sanctions yeah. and the economic activity is this is a long game. It's months and years. But the short-term goal is to stop the killings in Ukraine. We have to, because we can't keep witnessing these scenes. We can't, we but, can't but, you know, I'm, I'm this sorry. Wednesday is the time day. when Russia has, is due to pay. It's due to default on a massive mm. debt payment. If it does, it is really in trouble. And it hasn't done that. I just think you hand them Donetsk to end this and they'll be back for more before you can believe I it. Think well, I don't right. know. I think that... The, it will compromise its, its regional authority in a way, and I don't think that's a good look yeah. for anyone.